Hi everyone, Craig Warwick here with another double review, this time of the cloak and dagger figures from the Marvel Legends Spider Build-A-Figure series. I'm reviewing these figures together because the characters are rarely seen without one another and because every other wannabe YouTube action figure reviewer is doing it. So why not this wannabe too, hmm? Cloak and Dagger are Marvel's original Teenage Runaways debuting back in 1982. The duo were seen exacting revenge on the drug pushers who captured dozens of kids from the streets and killed them, but also mistakenly empowered Tyrone Johnson, that's Cloak here, with the power to teleport and absorb criminals into the dark force dimension that his body had become a portal to, and Tandy Bowen, that's Dagger, whose body now channels light force in the form of light daggers that could pierce the very soul of a wrongdoer. Cloak's dark force powers constantly hunger and Dagger's light force powers constantly yearn for release. By staying together, they can satisfy each other's needs and try to defend the innocent. Yeah, Cloak and Dagger are a little bit of a grim emo pair, but they are true Marvel legends. And it's amazing that the line has been going for over 15 years and we are only now getting figures of them. Ex Nilo beat them to the punch. What a world. I have to say that I'm fond of the characters of Cloak and Dagger, but will that carry over to the figures? Well, let's see. Cloak looks good out of the package, but the immediate first impression I get is, wow, what a big lump of plastic. We haven't seen a Marvel legend so completely drowning in his outer garments since Doctor Strange. Yes, Cloak comes with his fully sculpted cloak. It looks good and the dark blue and black banding design is well painted. In fact, the black bands are actually raised sculpted painted sections. The folds are really nicely sculpted and they all gather up to his trademark clasp, which is again really nicely realised. The hood is separate to the cloak but glued to the top of his head. Cloak has a nice unique head sculpt in there and the goatee beard identifies this as a more adult version of the duo well out of their teenage years. The paint on the head is very good, there's clean work on the eyes, eyebrows and goatee and the shading on the skin and the lips is also good with a lot of shading added to the sides of his face to help it disappear into the darkness of his hood. Cloak does have a fully articulated body underneath his cloak, but it's a little hard to get to. You see, while the cloak is made of a soft plastic, it's not quite soft or thin enough for it to be pushed aside easily. Cloak is famous for spreading his billowing cloak wide and ensnaring baddies in it, but that's not really possible with this. It does pop open at the clasp, but it's just not going to do much other than represent him standing there doing nothing. Having him with a cloth cloak may have been a solution here, but even that wouldn't have been ideal to me. I think they're rarely ever made well in the mass market and can look very jarring or doll-like when paired with sculpted figures. The body underneath is the Grim Reaper body, a little larger than I would have expected for Tyrone, and it doesn't really have anything special going for it at first look. But the arms and legs are actually semi-transparent. They're made of a dark, clear plastic, and actually, so are the cloak and the hood. It's a nice effect, and I think more talented action figure photographers than myself could find some hidden potential with this feature. If you feel so inclined, you can actually just remove the body from Cloak altogether, sit the hooded head on top and have the cloak standing there on its own with the light shining through it. And while we're talking about light, let's take a look at Dagger. In contrast, Tandy is very straightforward. She uses a standard female body cast in white plastic. I can see this being very sought after for customs of Storm, Emma Frost, Moonstone and others. The hips, to me, are noticeably a different shade of white, but it's not too bad. The dagger design down Tandy's front is cleanly painted in a Caucasian flesh tone. There isn't any sculpted detailing on her costume, which is a bit of a shame. And I really just wish Hasbro had printed a really distracting serial number on her to ruin that pure white light aesthetic. Oh wait, my mistake guys, there it is. Phil Marks Hasbro, carry on ruining your figures. Good job. Dagger does seem to receive a more modest chest than most female heroes. I think this is because all of the other chest pieces have wrinkles between the breasts or would be pretty indecent with this cutout costume design, but it suits her ballerina background well either way. 
Dagger reuses the Mockingbird head sculpt, the Spider Woman hair sculpt, and the Greedo hand sculpt. Look at those fingers. Well, I suppose she was a runaway. Hey, Tandy, you should phone home. Ooh, bad joke. Shut up, Matt. Ooh. The head sculpt and hair sculpt suit her well. The hair is softer than it was on Spider Woman, so it doesn't restrict her articulation as much, and it curves back nicely behind her ear, showing off the crescent design around her eye. Unfortunately, it also shows off something on the Mockingbird head sculpt that we were never meant to see. Her lack of an ear. Mockingbird's glasses slotted into holes concealed on the sides of her head, but Tandy is just rocking her ear holes with no shame. You go girl, serving that hills have eyes realness. Who needs lobes anyway? Cloak doesn't come with any accessories beyond his cloak, which is a pretty big one admittedly, a dagger does come with this energy effect. It's almost straight from the comics and represents the trail of light when Tandy swings her arm and throws her daggers. It's made from a pearlescent white plastic and attaches to her arms and, well, it's not great to my eye. It's a little bit naive. I think the dagger furthest from her hand should have travelled further than the others and they should all be a little less clunky. It would actually have been nice if the transparent plastic effect they used for cloak had also carried over to dagger here. After all, it's more appropriate for dagger to appear with light shining through her than cloak. You can pair the figures up together, and even though it's not really possible to get a whole lot of posing options with Tyrone's cloak, you can pose them so that dagger seems to be emerging from within it, which is the classic cloak and dagger move. Let's look at articulation. Fully clothed, cloak doesn't articulate much. You can get his right arm and hand out of the cloak a little, but the rigidity of the plastic tends to limit what you can do with it. His legs can also be posed to emerge from the cloak. His head rotates and surprisingly looks this far down and this far up. And that's it for cloak's articulation everyone. You can of course remove his cloak and you have the full set of Marvel Legends articulation. Arms that do this, a body that does this, hips that do this, legs that do this, you know the score. In the comics, Dagger is a graceful ballerina who strikes amazingly beautiful poses while using her powers. But fuck that, because it's a Hasbro female. Tandy's head rotates, looks this far down and this far up. And by this far, I mean not at all, thanks to her hair. Her shoulders move this far up and rotate. She has rotation at the bottom of the bicep and a single jointed elbow that bends this far. She has rotation and a hinge at the wrist. There's an all-in-one upper torso joint that rotates and bends this far forward and this far back and also leans to the sides. She can kick this far forward, not really back at all. Her legs move this far out to the side. She has rotation at the top of the thigh and double jointed knees that bend this far. She doesn't have rotation mid-calf, but her ankles hinge this far forward and back, and she has ankle rockers. This is their legendary widest possible stance, still with both feet flat on the floor. So that's Cloak and Dagger. I find it hard to judge these figures because I like the characters so much. That makes me super harsh on them when they fail, but weirdly makes me want to let them get away with it. In any case, I'm really happy to finally have them in my collection. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this review. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I've been having a good time making these longer videos and the positive feedback and views I've been getting has been really encouraging. So thank you all for that. It is a lot of work to make these videos though. So please do remember to like, subscribe and share if you want me to keep making them. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next video where I hope to have thought up something to say about the spider build a figure that nobody asked for. But until then, pour on the power. Bye bye.